Hello class, welcome to today's lesson of 2-5, day two. We're gonna be talking about some more uh, geometry proofs here today. So today's goal, uh, understand the steps necessary to do angle proofs. And again, like all other videos, if you need to slow it down, just please pause it and move forward when you are ready. So to start, 2.5, day two. What we're gonna start with is we have this um, proof in front of us, and what we need to do is it has the steps written out, but we need to put it in order of how it will go. And so if we look at this proof here, it says, given measure of angle P plus the measure of angle Q equals 90, and the measure of angle Q equals five times the measure of angle P, prove that Q equals 75. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these four terms down here in the bottom here, and we need to move them around into the correct order. So what we need to look at first is what we're given. Right? We're given the two angles added together equal 90, and that Q is five times angle P. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute in what Q equals into our given statement. So I'm going to move these other ones down here now. And we're going to substitute in the five, at five times the measure of P in for where Q is in our original. And right, we're using the substitution property because we're taking something and we're substituting it in its place. From there, what we're going to do is we're going to combine like terms. Right, if we look here, one measure of angle P plus five measures of the angle P would then equal six of them. <clears throat> So we combine like terms, we get six times the measure of angle P equals 90. We're then going to divide both sides by six. If we do that correctly, we divide 90 by six and we should get the answer of 15. So now we found the measure of angle P to equal 15 by division. Well, we have one more step, right? We're trying to prove that Q is 75. Well, we're gonna plug in this 15 that we just found for measure of angle P and plug it into our original. We're gonna substitute, plug it back into our original, multiply it by five, and we get an answer of 75. So there are the steps for the proof right there. So now our next slide here. We're given this proof, right? We have <clears throat> that LP equals 35. We're trying to prove that LN equals 14. We're given a picture there, right? It says ln is 2x, and p is 4x minus 7. So to start with, right, our first term here, lp equals 35, well, this is given to us. That's so, right. More often than not, that first statement there is always what's given to us. So lp equals 35, that's given. So now we have this postulate here. Notice it says the segment addition postulate. Well, all that's saying is that our first segment, LN, oops, first segment LN plus segment NP is equal to the whole segment LP. Right, we learned about that in our first chapter about adding segments together, two smaller pieces equal the whole larger one. Now notice what we did is we had ln plus np equals lp. We just substituted in. We substituted in the values for both ln, np, as well as lp, which we are given all of those, right? Lp was given to us, and then the other two were given to us from the picture. So now we look here and we go, okay, well, what do we have to do? We gotta simplify, looking at the reasoning for step four, we gotta simplify. Well, that just means combine like terms. So 6x minus seven equals 35. So now our next step, right, we're trying to get to 6x equals 42. Well, mathematically what we had to do here is we had to add seven to both sides. So this would be the addition property addition property. So right, to get 6x equals 42, we had to add 7 on both sides. 
Now our next step, right, we're using division property. If we look, we're given the step that's happening. <clears throat> we're going to use division property and find that x is equal to 7. Right? If we divide both sides by 6, we get x is equal to 7. So our last step, we're trying to figure out what ln is. Well, given from the picture, we know that ln equals 2x. Right? That's right from the picture there. So now our next step is we're going to substitute in. Well, we just found what x is. So we know that ln is actually equal to 2 times 7. Right? We're plugging in 7 for x. We're substituting it in its place. And right, if we take 2 times 7, we simplify that out. We get ln is equal to 14. And right, what we're trying to prove should always be our last step. Should always be our last step in our proof. And if we need to look this over, please feel free to pause it. We're going to move on. So looking at our next proof here, notice we aren't given any of the statements. We're just given the reasoning for each thing. So right to start, this one should be fairly straightforward. Our given information is always what goes first here. So the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 3. Measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 3. And now this reflexive property is one we need to use to make sure we understand that something is equal to itself. It seems silly at times, right? This is important to say that angle 2 is equal to angle 2. Oh, I should put the measure. Sorry about that. We'll rewrite that. Right, the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 2. Right, reflexive property is the same forwards and backwards. It reflects across the equal sign there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take, right, we're going to use the addition property here. And we're just going to take our original from number one, and we're just going to add something here. We'll call it coordinate so we can see this here. Right, we're going to take the measure of angle one. plus the measure of angle 2, and we're going to set this equal to the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 2. Sorry to write over there. So the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 2. Right? Step 1 statement, we said those 1 and 3 were equal. Step two, we said two was equal to itself. So right, we just added the same thing to both sides. That's not going to affect our problem here at all. Now we look at this and go, okay, the angle addition postulate. Well, let's think about this. If we look at measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two, notice that angle is ABD. Angle A, B, D is equal to measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2. And if we look here and go, and find angle C, B, E, we're going to find that the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 2. So, right, we now have our angles by the angle addition posture. Right, all it's saying is we're adding two angles together to get the total angle. And then our last one, we're just substituting these in. Well, if we look at step three here, step three says that measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two is equal to the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle two. And if we look at step four, notice both sides of that equation are part of our number three, we can just now go and say that angle ABD, angle ABD is equal to, sorry, the measure of, is equal to the measure of angle CB. Right, all we're doing is taking these parts. Since they're equal to each other, we can then substitute in the angle and say these angles are now equal to our number. 
angles are 